I hope that there is enough network who will quickly see it. So here at the children, les enfants vont se présenter un par un pour vous parler un petit peu d'eux et et voilà, ils vont vous présenter leur nom, leurs âges déjà et voilà. Uh, my name is Zamand. Uh, I'm 10 years old and uh, while we're talking about the war, uh, we suffered a lot, but some people suffered a lot the, more than us. So. I know it will be hard for them to be able to talk, but try again. Uh, my name is Hani Alamari. I am uh, 17 years old. Hi, I'm Amir. I'm 16. Emil, 21. Shahid, 16. I'm Aladdin. I'm 16. Uh, so, uh, um, je vais demander en fait aux jeunes des, des questions par rapport à leur vie ici. Je trouvais que c'était intéressant de, de le faire comme ça. Et je vous invite en fait à poser des questions vous-même. Et je vais, je vais essayer de traduire. Some of you want to try to speak in French? No. I can understand. Yalla. No. Okay, I'll try. You will try? Yes, maybe. Bravo, Allah. So Allah will try. So I invite you <laughs> to prepare a question, okay? And I'll try to see it because it goes fast. Um, so I want just first to ask you what is the, the most difficult moments or the memories you have here in Aleppo? I think that the most difficult moment that we lived that when we knew that our close friends died in like for no reason just because they want to make some war and want to destroy our country that we used to live in very uh, very peaceful way so I think that it's very hard to resist that for that we don't have any we don't have our close friends anymore with us Stop. well uh, my uh my hardest moments, the hardest moment that I lived was uh, when my house got bombed, you know, like a year and a half ago. It was like really hard. I had to flee my house and my living room went down on the, you know, entrance of the building. Est-ce que quelqu'un d'autre veut dire quelque chose? Who was? Uh, don't do like if you don't speak French, you do speak French. You try, you say you will try to speak in French. You will try. I ahead. Yeah. Um, my house got bombed also like eight times in the same day and we were really scared my mom started crying and we hid in the basement I think that was like nerve-wracking and we were so scared but we're okay now mm -hmm. that was a half a year ago um, um, my hardest moment has to be it was two years ago um, I was coming home from school it was in like crap area I was in the bus and a mortar fell fell and there was a guy there was a person walking he was like let's say 22 and he he was hit with with a couple of splinters and he went on the floor and his um his skull, his skull cracked and his brain went out of, went out of his body and it was really disgusting and I and it felt it feels like crap because I couldn't help him but he was in front of me and it's kind of crappy you mean you know, that's right I mean how moment is now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, uh, the hard, one of the hardest moments uh, we lived was when uh, there was like uh, big rockets falling uh, all around our neighborhoods at night and uh, like the whole buildings uh, went down, a uh, whole family died actually um, and uh, it was like, it felt like it's the last time, uh, the last night of my life uh, yeah, uh, that's a moment I would never forget in my life. Well, I think the hardest thing you could ever live is fleeing your house. Like, truly, it's uh, really hard. You, you'll just uh, don't know what to do. Where should I go now? What should I do next? What should I do with, for example, my pet or my, my brother? Is he going to be safe? Right. One of the hardest moments is uh, when your friend dies, you feel like losing one of a member of your family, like brother. It's a really hard moment. So it feels really crappy to lose one of your friends. Uh, so I ask them different questions about that, but if you have questions, I'll try to see if you will send something now and they will answer to you. So ask question now. I give you one minute. Comment pouvait-il étudier? Uh, okay, a question. Uh, how have you been able to study during uh, because of the war and everything? Did you 
keep going to school and uh, yeah, yes we kept going to school we survived even if even if the situation was awful but we kept going to school because at, at uh, life li life won't stop right here it has to be it has to continue to we should go to some, we should go somewhere so I think that no matter what but we should we we, we survived and we, we we should still survive it by going to school uh, there's a year of our life like actually the first year of war uh, I didn't go to school like for a whole year yeah I skipped the seventh uh, grade uh, yeah it didn't feel good trust me uh, um, the first year for I was uh, baccalaureate and it was like uh, the hardest year of war. There was no food, uh, no water, no electricity, no fuel, nothing. And uh, we were like uh, about to stop going to school many times, but eventually we continued and we got over it. Um. No, my school didn't stop. They we worked it out uh, because of hard work and uh, willing. So, but it was hard. It was really hard the studying and stuff. We we actually had to study on candles. It's like the Middle Ages or something. But we actually had to do that. <laughs> we did it. And uh, the school stopped a lot because they, we used to receive rockets here. Even yeah. here in the garden. And uh, two on the, on the entry of the school, I see. Also, yes. hopefully, the, nobody get injured here. I don't think so. Nobody get injured no, in nobody, the school. Nobody. But they closed the school, in fact, a lot of time. In which reg? Uh, okay, I, uh, for the people who doesn't understand English, I'm sorry because they, they speak English. They speak French, but they're lazy, in fact. Huh? You are speaking French. Um, so, um, si vous avez des questions en français, posez-la. Je les pose uh, en anglais et. Uh, okay, it's a question political, but I don't want to ask it. Uh, no, no, ask. You ask? ask okay. What do you think about your government? Eh, give us. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, uh, What do we think about our government? Is uh, one of the best governments in the world. Um, most of uh, the thing you hear or you see uh, about our government is. It's uh, totally uh, wrong. Um, I mean, uh, of course, uh, our no, nobody. And no, there's good and bad things. Yes, there is good and bad things, but of course, and our government won't hurt us if uh, if it's too bad. We wouldn't stay here. We are not forced to stay here. We can leave, but we're still here. And people who lived uh, leave because of terrorists, not because the gov the government is bad or something. Actually, our government is trying its best uh, to get everything back on track, so we hope for the best. Um, honestly, um, it's good and everything, but it's still corrupt. It's the same as er any other government in the world. Um, every, every person, every aristocrat, they're all corrupt, so it doesn't matter if he's trying or not. He's going to end up taking a bribe, he's going to end up screwing you over, and he's going to end up selling you. So as you see, there is good and bad things. It is not about showing only the good things about Syria, but the country here, people believe that uh, the terrorists outside, they come for freedom, they bring us freedom, but they don't bring freedom, they come to take it. So um, this is, I think, something very important that the people, uh, I can ask you, you will see the reaction, I think it will be funny. What do you think when I ask you, that the, when I tell you that the people outside, they believe that the people, the terrorists, that we are calling rebel are uh, bringing you freedom. No, what they're just taking it. They're just ruining. They're just ruining our, our they're lives. They're destroying our lives. Yeah. Uh, they destroyed everything. They throw bombs at us. Like, they destroyed like... our lives. They destroyed our dreams. They destroyed our uh, everything. It was everything beautiful that was in uh, in Aleppo, especially in Aleppo. As I mentioned earlier, my house got bombed, but. Well, I live in a residential area, so there are no army forces. Why do you have to bomb my house exactly? Do I have like a fucking, <laughs> like a, I don't know, like a storage for arms? Am I an arms dealer? Do I look like one? I don't think so. So uh, I'll try to see if there is que la paix uh, que je vais vous en politique pour que ça ne se reproduise plus. Uh, we don't believe that we are helping you. Yeah, that saying that 
uh, they are saying that, of course, uh, the Frisian army, they think, uh, people think that they are helping you. They are here to Who? help you. Uh, Frisian army. army. Yeah. Just, uh, okay. Actually, they, they want to uh, turn our country to only Islamic, uh, uh, like, not a, a normal Islamic state. Islamic state. No, not Islamic. Like a strict uh, Islamic caliphate, eh, caliphate. Caliphate. Yeah. Eh, caliphate Islamic uh, states, and um, yes, uh, and that, I don't think that they can they can go somewhere with this idea because especially in Syria we always used to live like Christians, Muslim, uh, Muslims, and uh, different kinds of religions, and uh, nobody had a problem with that. So I think that mm, hard luck. Euh, so, et si vous avez des questions encore une fois, je n'ai pas pu regarder toutes les questions comme je filme en même temps, mais je pensais que c'était important que de regarder. Uh, ah, how do you see your future? What are you doing now? What do you plan for the coming years? Uh, I will just say something before that. That, uh, as I say, uh, comme ils l'ont dit avant, la particularité de cette guerre, c'est que elle a détruit non seulement les maisons, elle a détruit le pays, elle a détruit l'économie. Les sanctions qui ont été votées font que la plupart des gens qui sont ici voyagent à cause de ça. Et la plupart des gamins qui sont ici ont du mal à voir leur futur, sincèrement. Um, uh, somebody is asking, how do you see your future? How do you imagine it? Um, it's blank. You don't know what, what's going to happen. You could die in a minute, you could die in an hour, a week, a month, or a year. So you, you live day by day, hopefully the best. Yeah, we do what we have to do. We study, we hope for the best, we hope this war will end soon so we can go on with our lives like normal. Say something, Emil? Uh, to me, like, uh, like uh, two years ago or one year, one year ago, if you ask me how do you see your future, uh, I would probably say, and no, I don't see myself here in Syria, I would say I see myself outside, but now it's like uh, a little bit better, especially here in Aleppo. And uh, hopefully that you know, the situation will get much better and uh, the city will uh, rise up again like economically and uh, there will be like a good uh, uh, work, chance, work chances. And uh, uh, some people said, how do you see, uh, let me check the question. Thomas, merci de te laver tes If you have, I think it is okay. La situation n'est pas confirmée. Vous pouvez dire que des pays voulant déstabiliser. The people are saying that yes, of course, this is not the problem of the city. It's the problem of the people outside to try to to destroy the city. Yeah. You agree with that? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, pretty much. Because uh, before war, we were like uh, maybe. Yeah. One of the best uh, countries in the world, everything was cheap, we had everything, uh, we could do everything we want, but uh, now it's like we, we uh, went back like a hundred years ago. And the problem was that, see, that the, our country was, I think, the only country that hasn't got any the international debits with, the, with other countries. And I think that that was the uh, the that was the problem for the, for the other countries. So they they wanted to do the war just to destroy our country and to have to take some money and take everything, fuel and uh, historical stuff. You can say that we were developing slowly, but now uh, in the war, it's, it looks like we're gonna like a hundred years back. Yeah, it's not good. And this country is, I mean, uh, if you can come here and you can see Syria, how it is, you'll see that it's like sort of Paris. There is the yes. war, there is economic sanctions, because it is not the war the problem, it is the economic sanctions. My country, America, voted sanctions against Syria, but not against the government, against the people. Okay. So who is paying the price today of there is no job, the money worth nothing, your families have to stay? This is the sanctions. And this is not even the war, this is not even the terrorists. This is the over type of terrorists. Yeah. This is governmental terrorists. And if uh, just one thing which is important, I think, because people may say that uh, the people who are here, they don't represent Syria, which is not true, because until now, I've been filming the same people in East Aleppo, the same families uh, who live with terrorists, and they have exactly 
the same testimony. I can continue to publish the same testimonies, but you will see that these children, they have no difference with the people from the East. Two different stories, two different wars, but the same feelings. Because the people who escape, they don't escape from rebel, they escape from terrorism. And um, let me try to ask a question again, maybe people want to... Uh, I mean, I, I want to ask you again, just to know, just your impression, I don't prepare anything. Uh, in France, uh, we keep receiving actually uh, the head of the Free Syrian Army uh, as a support for the transition for freedom of your country. Uh, nobody in our government called uh, Jabhat al-Nusra, Sultan Murad, Nureddin Azinki, Free Syrian Army, nobody called them terrorists. But really, what do you think about that? As Syrians who have been living there, as Syrians, you have been meeting again the families from the East, you reunified because the children who are here are not only Christians, they are Muslims, they are Christians, but since there is no religion here. Uh, what do you think about that? What do you think about these people still outside who are saying that they are bringing freedom? The same who are connecting with America today and who invaded the north of Syria. I say that enough is enough and we're done with the stuff. That they're not, they're not giving us freedom, they're taking it. And maybe just they have to leave us alone. Well, consider a random person walking up to you saying, you're wearing jeans, you deserve a whiplash. Do you th um, and he's wearing uh, weird clothes, he has an AK, he has pistols, guns, grenades, anything. Do you call him a terrorist? Or do you call him a rebel or uh, the per person giving you freedom? Do you, um, you wear shorts, you get beheaded, you mess out a prayer, you get whipped. Um, you get bombs. Is that is that freedom or is that terrorism? Which one is it? You can't uh, force anyone to do anything. Actually, well, I I want to you know have gel on my hair. That's none of your business. I can do whatever I want, but that's not freedom. You're just you know putting chains on my hands. That's not freedom. And the people who have been living there, and all of us, we have been living under the bombings every day. We lost a lot of people. We saw people dying in the streets. Pieces of members of people. For what? This is what we call freedom. You can see the children who are here. I mean, you can see the life around. These good areas, bad areas. You can go even in the bad areas. The freedom is here. These are, again, good and bad thing in this country. But the people and everything, this, the lie about this war, is so huge. It is so huge. If I say that it is a, this war is a lie, what do you think about? It? I ask you, just you. What do you mean? If he, when I say if the war is a lie about here, about the reasons of this war. Hey, of course it's a lie because we never asked for freedom. No, we already have freedom, but uh, some cheap people uh, got like uh, paid and uh, they were uh, brainwashed with, um, with like um, uh, religious uh, Not. thoughts. Uh, that's, wh that's why, uh, you know, you may see people like uh, asking for freedom, but they were like brainwashed or they were paid money to do that. And, uh, and they yeah. don't know, they don't even know what, 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 they're, what they're doing. They thought that they, that they came here to like, like, to go, uh, like they thought that Syria is Palestine. <laughs> They're so True. drunk. They, they don't know what, what they, they don't know what, what where, where even they are. So I don't think that they they are army or asking for freedom. They are just asking for money. I'll see if there is question. Maybe yes. And yeah, if if they are uh, if we are demanding for freedom, how can like uh, people from the outside? like from, I don't know, from Saudi, from uh, foreign countries. How can they give us freedom? If we want freedom, we take freedom by ourselves. How can like foreign people give us freedom? And especially Saudi Arabia. Yeah. This is not the main country who give freedom. Uh, Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. is the most country that should have freedom. <laughs> it's like the last country on the on main planet. planet. Talk, talk, about about talk about freedom. Yeah. <laughs> talk about Women aren't even allowed to drive. In my opinion, they saw us getting better and better, so they made this war to stop us from being a great nation or something like that. So, uh, just to, I see there is a question what do you think about Russia 
and the support for Syria. Me, I will answer this question and I will let them answer. Uh, the first video I did when I arrived in Aleppo, I did it in the school uh, before the, the students arrive. And I say in the video that I was praying for the Russian planes to arrive. You will tell me this is terrible what I am saying. I'm not saying that I am pro-Putin, this is not my question, but at that moment, if the Russian planes wasn't there, we get bombed at any hour of the day. No planes, we receive rockets, mortars, doshka, at any moment, and people die everywhere. So you will tell, yes, the planes were bombing also the East Aleppo, which was terrible. It is true. We have been supporting these families. We are working with these families today. We are helping as much as we can. But believe me, if the Russian planes haven't been here, today it will be Jabhat al-Nusra at our place here. Cutting and our heads. And cutting, uh, yes, and uh, we will be today, much more people will have died. Really, you have no idea about that. You can't understand what we have been living here. So I want, I ask them, uh, what do you think about Russia or support of other people? Uh, first of all, one of the reasons that the war uh, like especially in Aleppo didn't done like too fast it's because okay we know and the government knows that there is civilians in East Aleppo uh, if if as you see on the media like the government are bombing all of East Aleppo uh, we would have like finished wars like two years ago it's been like four years uh, is it like possible to for the government to keep blowing like East Aleppo for four years and it's not done yet. Uh, they were like bombing only, only the areas that they know there is terrorists, not civilians. And about uh, Russia, um, also maybe the media outside uh, shows that Russia is bombing us or something, but it's quite the opposite. Uh, we are living here, we are seeing where they are bombing. They are bombing like uh, first of all, it's not a civilian areas, and uh, it's full of terrorists. And uh, uh, they mention in the media that Russia is blowing uh, civilians, but they don't mention like uh, as America, at the USA or France says when they blow like a village in the countryside of Aleppo uh, with a full village full of civilians by mistake. They say. And they don't show that on They don't media, mention that at all. they mention that Russia is bombing us. Yeah. Well, oh. just, that's just not fair. Not fair. Well, like, even before the war, there were always, um, Russia was always in the country. There were, there's a place called Hamdania, right? There are, like, huge villas there. Um, they always belong to Russia and people, and Russian people. They have Russian schools, Russian colleges, and no one knew anything about them. They were just hidden between us. Um, and during the war, they started surfacing so they can help and protect us. So it's quite the opposite of what you see in here. And if the planes bomb, I mean, it, it's a war. I mean, there is no clean war. I mean, also uh, the, the civilians die. But we forget to say that finally most of the terrorists use the infrastructures, as I said, in the East Aleppo, the hospital, the schools, where the civilians live to hide. They stock weapons, they stock everything, and they used to shot from there. So when the planes bomb, there is civilians dying also, which is something that nobody understands. It is terrible. Nobody wants here that any civilians die because we trust in any civilians here. We don't care about the civilians. We, we, ate, we don't have just, we don't want the terrorists. We don't want to keep dying. They don't want to have their friends dying in the street or uh, has to pick up pieces of people. I mean, and people died also because it is a war. It is normal, it is a war. But the thing is that the terrorists were using the, the people as human shields. Uh, the, they were shooting the people who were trying to escape. You, you have no idea about what happened here, and really. So, um, uh, even, it's... Uh, even like when the Syrian army, uh, like, um, uh, like, goes forward in the areas that the terrorists are existed, uh, the terrorists has to uh, go back, and but the civilians uh, stays in their houses. So when the terrorists goes back, they start bombing the the areas that they were already with, living with the people who are who are living there. So like they don't have friends, they just, just want to destroy bomb everything. everyone. They want to destroy everything. They one day one day one day they are living with you. The second day they are bombing you. And uh, like 85% 85 85% 85 of the population of the East came here 
they decided by themselves they were the green buses they can go to Idlib for free they can even the government allow them because they will never uh, accept to lose the war so the government allow them to go with their Kalashnikov and with, uh, with their individual weapons we could see the green buses passing through the city yes. and with the terrorists going to Idlib in safety with the organizations but the people the big majority 85 percent decided to come here here it is the place where the people were bombing them so why do they come here about the, when when they show on the news that uh, the civilians are are dying in the, in the in the east part of Aleppo, they're not just civilians. They're they're the terrorist families, and the the Syrian army just announced it that uh, why, why just leave this place and we, because we're gonna bomb it. We we, we just we wanna just uh, the. They gave them a head start to leave. Yes, yes. but they didn't leave. So uh, it's not it's not our problem anymore. We just announced it, and they didn't want to leave because they're just terrorists, and they're happy to do it. And they, the fact is, which one point is important. It's not just that terrorists and they don't want to leave. It's that the families who live with the terrorists they have no choices. All the families I met, they have no choices. They live under the Sharia, not the real Sharia, because some of you are Muslims. Uh, this is not the Sharia they are using. They are modifying modifying the Islam to use it on purpose. So it's most not, it has nothing to have with the, the real Islam. This is not Islam. This is this is this is this isn't a, a, a real religion that they're having. We just, by the way, we just got from planes dropping papers which says we get we get this paper which are dropped by the planes just now and saying that they have to stop to bomb us because there is a ceasefire. They keep bombing us. The last week we received dozens of motors and that says that if you don't stop to bomb the civilians here, we will have to bomb you again, even if there is a ceasefire. They give them a chance, but they, they don't want to leave. So, so the, the thing is that uh, we nobody here wants that people uh, die. Nobody. From a side to another, we don't care. The terrorists who are here are a minority which keep a majority in hostage. So do you want just, because maybe it's hot and some of, some of them are fasting, so... I mean, we're tired, so yes. do you want uh, to say a last message, uh, a last message to the people? Um, yes, I want to say a message, just uh, leave us alone <laughs> and leave our country alone. We can figure it out by ourselves, just leave us alone, for the love of God, leave us alone. You want to say something, Shahed? Um, well, if you're against us or you're with us, people are dying here. Well, some people don't care, but if it's your close friend or someone who you, who you know, you will be sad about it. And, I mean, we're real people and we're living our lives. So, if you accept it or not, that's what's happening over here. And thanks for your support, if you're supporting us. Do you want to say something um, else? It doesn't matter if you're with us or against us. As long as you, 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 you reach to your humanitarian side and just fuck off. Completely fuck off. We'll figure it out. Until you, because if if you if you wanna if you if you stay and just uh, we're, we're, we're trying to, we, we, when you until you figure something out for us, people are still dying. So leave us alone. Uh, all what we want is just to go to our schools, go see our friends, go to scout, just live our lives. We don't want anybody to die. We don't want our friends to die. We just just live simply. That's it. Me as a Syrian citizen, I want to get my normal life back. Just live my normal life. So, if you can support us, do it. Just do it. Um, if you, if you uh, still doesn't understand like the the idea of what's happening here, think of it as if it will happen in your country. Uh, think of it as if you are living in your Fr in France, like if you are living in France and everything is good, uh, you are living a happy life, and then, uh, like, foreign countries uh, sending uh, armed groups... Uh, just to destroy your just country. To, to, and they say that they are uh, demanding for freedom for you. Would you, would you accept that? Just think of it like that. So, uh, we'll stop on that, and uh, I, I am just... This youth wanted also to share that because it's I know that the conflict is difficult to understand I know it's very very hard but the reality is much different than what people are telling you so 
uh, you can see these children, uh, they're, they're, nobody have a, a gun on their heads. Mm -hmm. We will maybe tell you that we are the propagandists again, maybe they work there's from... There's a, a Muslim girl just sitting right, just beside me and she's not having the black dress or just... <laughs> we're just living like normal people. Yes, and the people are united, the church are connected to the mosques. There is like extremists in both sides, in Christians and in, uh, in, uh, in Islamists. But the thing is that, uh, oh I can say, um, the people here, they want the peace. They want that to stop. Uh, they, they, they tell you everything they feel. Today we just sit because we were working on, uh, on their dreams. Yeah. And... Uh, and stop the racism. If yeah. there is any racism. Yes, to stop. Yes, anyway, to stop. Just so they they share that with you. You do whatever you want. Nobody is here to tell you what to think, how to behave, whatever. But just remind that in a little piece of your mind and try to keep it. Have a just, little of a humanity in yourselves. Because you can believe the media. You can believe the people telling you everything but I mean you have people who live there who do you want to, to believe people who are writing about the war behind the keyboard in Paris in New York uh, in Saudi Arabia or whatever or Istanbul especially Istanbul or people who live in Aleppo are telling you what we're living and the same what we have been living with the, the East families they have been telling you everything so there is no uh, good war there is no all white there is no all black but the balance today is really going down on the side of the people who live there. So just a little high and we will go rest. I can say it in French. Au revoir. Bye. Bye. See ya. Tschüss. Arigato. Adios. Bravo. Yalla. A bientôt.